So interim interest, remember this, mortgages are paid in arrears. So for example, if we're dealing with interest, if you were closing on November 23rd, when would your first payment be as a buyer? It would actually be January because we are charging you in arrears. So when we close on November 23rd, your first payment is going to be January 1. And when I say paid in arrears, when you make January 1's payment, you paid for living there in December. That is December's interest that you just paid. So that's what I mean by arrears. So we can all agree that they'll get December's interest in January, January's interest in February, so on and so forth. Well, folks, banks exist to make money. If they lent you money on the 23rd, you owe them interest starting on the 23rd. So we call that interim interest. You owe us interest in the interim of your amortization schedule starting because that is the only time for them to collect this interest. Otherwise, it would throw off your amortization schedule. When we are dealing with interim interest for a buyer, you have to charge them for the day of closing because that's loan stuff. The bank says, here's $200,000 today, start paying interest today. If you wanted to figure out how much interim interest the buyer owed for this same equation, the same date, it would be 30 days in November minus the day of closing plus one because you are getting charged interest on the day of closing because that's the day you borrowed money. If we're dealing with taxes, you start counting after the day of closing because the seller paid the day of closing. But if you're dealing with loan stuff, loan stuff doesn't affect the seller. It's just the buyer's problem. So the banks say, we lent you money today, start paying us interest today. The other thing that I'll tell you is use them fingers because if you're dealing with interim interest, count the day of closing, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28, 29, 30th. Notice with interim interest, it's eight days. If we're doing taxes, it's seven because it starts after the day of closing. Does that make sense? If the question was, how much interim interest would the buyer owe if they had a $200,000 loan at 6% interest? You would take your $200,000 loan times your annual interest rate of 6%, which gives us annual interest of 12,000, but we're not dealing with annual interest, we're dealing with daily interest. So you would take 12,000 divided by 360 to give us daily interest, or yet again, that per diem of 33.33 per day. And now it's eight days, right? Because I told you, it is how many days in the month minus the day of closing plus one for eight days times 33.33. So that would be a single entry buyer debit of 266.64 for interim interest. In other words, interest paid to the bank in the interim of the loan starting. When we're dealing with interest, if you own a home, you make a pity payment, principal interest, taxes, and insurance. A portion of that goes towards your principal and interest, and that number is constant. That's how amortization works. It will never deviate. Let's say your p and is 1200 a month. How much is allocated towards principal and how much is allocated towards interest changes, but it's still just $1,200 a month. That's how amortization works. A fully amortized loan payment one is 1200 and payment 360 is 1200. And when you make your last payment, you're in a fully amortized loan is gone, right? You paid off your zero balance. The important thing to understand here is that when we're dealing with loans, you're getting charged interest every single day. The bank just doesn't collect it, but once a month when you make your monthly payment. There's interim interest for a buyer, which is interest they pay in the interim of their amortization schedule starting. And then there's what we call accrued interest for a seller. You can all agree that you're getting charged interest every single day. And as a seller closing on November 23rd, when would the bank normally have gotten November's interest from the seller? In December. When the seller would have made their December payment, the bank would have gotten November's interest. It's kind of this interesting thing where both the seller and the buyer have to pay portions of a monthly interest when they close on a home. So if you were to be a seller and your loan payoff was $200,000, on the day of closing, your, your loan payoff is actually more than that. Your principal balance and your loan payoff are different. Why? Because whatever day you close, you still owe accrued interest as a seller. And so if you want to get technical, the seller would owe interest from November 1st through November 23rd, the day of closing. And a buyer would owe interest from the 23rd through the end of the month. They both owe interest on the day of closing because they're both dealing with the respective loan stuff. Seller's loan stuff, buyer's loan stuff. So that's why we include the day of closing. For taxes, only one person has to pay the day of closing, and that's the seller in North Carolina.
Let me give you one example that you may see that's going to try to trip you up in these prorations. Closing is happening, and I'll make it easy, January 10th. And it is an investment property where you are getting $1,600 a month in rent. How would this be handled at closing? When do you pay rent? Mortgages and the interest are paid in arrears. Rents are paid in advance. When the tenant paid January's rent on the 1st, they were paying to live there in January. The seller is going to be the landlord from January 1st to January 10th, and the buyer is going to be the landlord from January 11th to January 30th. If the rent is $1,600, who has already received this $1,600? The seller. So what's going to happen on a closing statement is we have to figure out how much of that they're not entitled to keep, meaning how much do they have to give the buyer? We're doing the same thing. It's just prorations on a different scale. Taxes were annually. Rents are monthly. So what you would do is you would say, okay, well, $1,600 a month divided by 30 days in our month or 53.33 a day. And so the seller is entitled to keep 10 days, January 1st to January 10th. So there's a couple of ways you could do this. You can figure out, well, the seller is entitled to keep 10 days, or you could just say, well, the buyer is entitled to the day of closing minus 10 for 20 days. 20 days times our per diem is 53.33. The sellers already received $1,600 and it's in their personal account. We're not gonna make them bring money to closing because they're gonna make money from selling the house. So we would say that this is a seller debit of 1066.60 and a buyer credit of 1066.60. Because we're just going to take it from the seller's proceeds, the amount that they weren't entitled to keep and give it to the new landlord, the buyer. If you like this video, feel free to share it with a friend. For more real estate education content, please subscribe to the channel. From all of us at Seacoast Real Estate Academy, thank you for watching.